Hello, my dear friends. How important is one word and how significant is one letter? Well, ordinarily you would say not very. When it comes to Torah, one word can be very significant and even one letter can be of great importance. And such is the case with the opening letter of Parshas Vizos HaBracha, which we read on Simchas Torah. Vizos HaBracha, the Vav at the beginning of the Parsha is seemingly superfluous and unnecessary. Vizos HaBracha means, and this is the Bracha that Moshe Rabbeinu, the last day of his life, that he blessed the Jewish people. And, and Vizos implies that it's somehow related to what transpired before, but it's a standalone Parsha. Moshe Rabbeinu gave the Jewish people a bracha before he died. Why does the Torah add that little vav at the beginning of Zos HaBracha? So I want to share with you three explanations, and each one has a tremendous lesson. The first is from the Cheskuni, the famous 13th century commentator on, on Chumash. The Cheskuni writes, there's a concept that Chazal articulate that when a person gives Musr, parent to a child, a baby to a student, a leader to the congregation, it should always be small dolche vimin mikar. You push away with your left hand, but you draw the person closer with your right hand, which means to say, don't leave things on a negative note. If you want to give a person criticism, you have to make sure to end on something positive. And you have to show the person that you care about them and, and you, by you, by ending on a, by being the car of being min, by concluding, by bringing them closer, then the person realizes that you have their best interest in mind and the person will be able to accept the criticism. Moshe Rabbeinu in last week's Parsha of, ha, of, ha, of Hazinu expresses to, uh, criticism of the Jewish people. He gives them tachacha. He admonishes them for the sins that they have committed and that they will continue to commit throughout Jewish history. So Moshe did not want to end on a negative note. So, vizos ha and don't think that all he did was criticize the Jewish people, but vizos ha and this is the blessing that he gave the Jewish people. He fulfilled the concept of small docha, pushed away with the left hand, vimin, mikarva, pulled, put, pulled towards himself with the right hand. He finished his life by giving not by giving criticism, by giving a bracha. And here the lesson is that we're all in a position where at times we have to criticize. The truth is criticism in general is not a good thing. It's not a great thing to do because criticism oftentimes turns people off. But if it is necessary to criticize as a parent or a teacher, then make sure that the concluding note should be min mikar. Draw the person near. Person needs to know that you love them or her, and that you're not criticizing out of anger or hostility or animosity. That's the the first explanation. The significance of the of the letter vav. Second explanation is um, made by the uh, Or Hachayim Akadosh, which was, who was Rav Chaim Ben Atar. He was born in Italy, and then he made Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael. He lived in the 18th century, and he wrote a beautiful commentary on Chumash known as the Orachayim HaKadosh. Or he was known as the Orachayim HaKadosh, the Holy Orachayim. His commentary is called the Orachayim. So the Orachayim HaKadosh said, offers two explanations. He actually offers more, but I'm going to share two explanations why the Parsha begins with above. First explanation is... Immediately before the beginning of his Osa Bracha, Moshe recounts the episode of his hitting the rock, which was the the reason why he was not able to enter at Shal. Moshe Rabbeinu pines to enter at Shal. He, he prays to a tremendous fervor, tremendous amount of tefillos to be allowed to enter at Shal, but he's denied that opportunity. And why is that? Because God told him to speak to the rock, and instead he hit the rock when the Jewish people needed water. Moshe Rabbeinu expresses the fact that the Jewish people, in the beginning of Dvarim, that it was Lamanchem, it was because of the Jewish people. They pressured Moshe Rabbeinu to extract water, and that's why he, he was impetuous, and he hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. Says the Archaim HaKadosh that 
Moshe Rabbeinu should have been, should have had tremendous resentment against the Jewish people because of their, their pressure. He sinned and, and his life's dream was unfulfilled. He had to say goodbye to the Jewish people the last day of his life when he was still in, outside of Eretz Yisrael. He didn't never have the schus to enter Eretz Yisrael. So he should have been resentful. So Moshe Rabbeinu was, was not resentful. And not only was he not resentful, but he gave, after telling the Jewish people it was because of you that I'm not entering, he gave the Jewish people a, a bracha. It shows the, the greatness of his character. And not only that, but the Chumash says, it was Zosa Bracha Sheberach Moshe, Yishel Kimis Bnei Yisrael, Lufnei Moso. It was the day he was dying. And as, if anything, you would think that the, the day when he was dying, the resentment would be even greater because he's facing death which is, be, if not for the Jewish people, that never would have happened. And therefore, but nonetheless, even Lufnei Moser, Rosh Shabbenu, gave a bracha to the Jewish people. So that's why the Vav is appropriate, because it connects the end of Hazinu, which speaks about Moshe's failure in, in, in speaking to the rock and the result of not entering Eretz Yisrael, it connects that to Vizos bracha that in spite of the fact that they, the Jews caused him not to enter, he would still, he blessed them with a full heart. Then the Arachayim says a third explanation, which for me resonates the most. And that, all the explanations are beautiful, but this one resonates the most for me. And that is, the Medrash says that Moshe Rabbeinu, the title of Isha Alkim, in the beginning, in Zosa Brachas, says, Zosa Brachas, Shabarach Moshe, Isha Alkim. This is the Brach of Moshe, the man of God gave the Jewish people the name also. In the entire Chumash, you don't have another place where Moshe is referred to as Ishoel Kim, the man of God. He's known as Evan Hashem, the servant of God, but not Ishoel Kim, the man of God. The Medjah says, Moshe Rabbeinu did not become Ishoel Kim until he blessed the Jewish people, until he gave them a bracha. And he gave them the bracha of the Zos HaBracha, then he became the Isha Kim. That's why the Pasuk says, Zosa Bracha Sheberach Moshe, Isha Kim. He was the man of God because he gave them a bracha. It says the Arachayim HaKadosh that the reason why the Torah puts in the Vav is to explain that in addition to everything else that Moshe Rabbeinu did, Moshe Rabbeinu was a great person. He took the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim. He, he brought down the Torah from Har Sinai. He led the pe people in the desert for 40 years. He was the advocate for the Jews when they sinned. He brought the man down, all, all the things that he did. But the Torah is saying, you know what? There's one more thing that he did that br brought him to an even higher level of, of Isha Akim, and that is that he gave a bracha to the Jewish people. Vizosa bracha. He did all these other things. So it's, it's the vav is connected in the first explanation, the Vav is connected to the to the previous parsha. The first two explanations, but according to the third, this third explanation, the Vav connects the Zos Abracha to all the rest of the Torah because it's the entire history of the Jewish people under the leadership of Moshe Rabbeinu. The Torah is saying, and you know what? In addition to all the other terrific things that Moshe Rabbeinu did. And this is the bracha that he gave to the Jewish people as an Ishokim. He came an Ishokim by giving a bracha. And so it's the, the final testament to Moshe Rabbeinu that he became an Ishokim. And therefore, it's the, it's the conclusion of everything that preceded it. And the Vav, the, the Vav Achibor, the Vav of connection, is so appropriate. And I think there's such a powerful thought here that. Moshe Rabbeinu, you would think that with everything that he did, he went out to Har Sinai for 40 days. He spoke to God. He, he took the Jews out of Mitzrayim. He had enormous patience for the Jewish people. He, he tolerated all their, uh, all their shortcomings and failures, and they criticized him, and he still tolerated them. You would think, that what more could a, could a person, could a human being achieve? What, you would imagine that Moshe Rabbeinu already had achieved the level of Yishol Kim, but no, it's only after he gave a bracha, he became an Yishol Kim. And what you see from here is 
that it, the, the, the final point of elevation of a great person is the fact that the person is prepared to give brachas to the Jewish people. And I would, I would offer an explanation. Why is that so? It's because by what power does a, does a Jew give a bracha to somebody else? How do you give brachas? You have the Hasidic Rebbe's give brachas, the Rosh Hashivas give brachas, Sadikim give brachas. By, by what power? The, 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 we as human beings, the flesh and blood, do we have some magical power? So the, the, the way that we give brachas is, by, is, is explained by, by the bracha that the Kohenim give to the Jewish people. The Kohenim put the name of God on the Jewish people and God says, and I will bless them. So if God's blessing them, what do you need the Kohenim for? The Kohenim gives Berchus Kohenim. Hashem Who needs the Kohenim? If it's Vani Avarchem, if God is blessing them, so what do you need the Kohenim? So the answer is because the Kohenim served as the conduit for the Bracha. Why does God need a conduit? Why can't God give the Bracha without the Kohenim? Because God wants people to participate in the process. Giving a Bracha is the ultimate chesed. It's that you keep, don't... You, you, your, 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 your only care is about the welfare of another person. So the, the bracha, the extent that the bracha is effective is to the extent that the, that the person who's giving the bracha has no ego and no self-interest. If, if the person gives a bracha, but he's also worrying about his own, his own self and his own prestige and his own prominence, then that is like an interference it clogs the, the channels of the bracha. The more a person is self-negating and is devoted to others, the greater the bracha will be. Moshe Rabbeinu, by giving the bracha at the end of his life with a complete and full heart, and his only concern in the world was the welfare of the Jewish people. And he wasn't thinking about himself that he's about to pass away and he, he could have been depressed and morose and bitter and all that. Moshe Rabbeinu was only focused on the welfare of the, of the Jewish people. This was the bracha. There was other places in the Chumash where people give brachas. But this was the epitome of bracha because Moshe Rabbeinu had no impediments in his, in his, uh, that, it, it, that impeded the bracha as it flowed through the channels of, of the conduit of his soul to the Jewish people. And therefore the Chumash says, Vizos HaBracha. This is the final um, achievement of Moshe Rabbeinu, that he became an Isha Lukim, and he was able to give a, a bracha to the Jewish people. Isha Lukim means that he is a partner with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's God's partner. By giving a bracha, he's the partner to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's the connection of Vizo, the Vav HaChibur, that in addition to all the other things that he did, but he became the Ish Elohim. In Parshas Bereshis, which we are reading this Shabbos, the Torah says, Yom God gives brachas to the Jewish people. Every Shabbos, God gives a bracha. When God created man, he gave, he gave a bracha of that they should be, be multiplied. God gives brachas to the Jewish people, but God wants man to be a partner in, the, in giving brachas. And it's something that we should all take to heart. The importance of giving other people brachas. And even if perhaps you don't feel it sometimes, you know, you, you're, this level of Moshe Rabbeinu that he had, no, he was total self-negation. We're not on that madrega. But you could give a bracha anyway. If you can't give it with a full heart, give it with a half a heart, or a quarter of a heart, doesn't matter. Because by doing it, a person... If, if, if it affects himself and it, and it elevates oneself to a higher level. And a person always has to look for opportunities to give brachas. I talk often about the importance of giving compliments. So this is in addition to giving compliments because a compliment can change a person's life. You can elevate a person. You can change the person's mood. You can inspire the person. You can instill self-confidence. But there's, in addition to complimenting is, is, the, is giving a bracha. To give a bracha to another Jew brings the person closer to the Madrega, to the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, that he was Ish Ho'el He was the man of God. He was God's partner. And that's a terrific thing. 
that we are able to partner with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Every time we become, we give a bracha, we, to some extent, we are Isha Kim. And so, you know, you oftentimes connect, when you make a siyum, you connect the end of, of what you're concluding with the beginning of what you're learning. So here is a connection between Bezos HaBracha and Embracious. Embracious we read about that God gave bracha to mankind. That's God giving brachas. But the end of the Torah is that man gives the bracha. Man becomes the Isha Elkim. Man becomes the partner with, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu as he reaches the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. And we all, to some extent, could become an Isha Elkim by giving brachas to others. We need to find as many opportunities as possible to shower other people with our good blessings. Even, you, you, we don't even realize how many times we, we are giving brachas. We don't even, we give brachas, we don't even realize. When you say good Shabbos to somebody, or when you say good morning, or you say, Zai gesund, be well. Those are all brachas. So the bracha, the, the more a person gives the bracha with a full heart, the closer he becomes to Moshe Rabbeinu, Isho Elohim. And that, I think, is it. These three lessons are all beautiful. That, number one, if a person has to give Tolchacha, uh, if he has to reprimand, but it should be small dolchav imim mekarev, that he should bring the person closer in the uh, in, in the end. Number two, don't b- carry a grudge. Don't be resentful. Follow the example of Moshe Rabbeinu. He wasn't angry at the Jewish people. And finally, Bezos HaBracha, Isha Elohim, Asher Berach Moshe, Isha Elohim, that we should be, we should come as close as possible in our own lives to becoming an Isha Elohim like Moshe Rabbeinu because we have the enormous schus and capacity. God allows us to partner with him. In the end, the bracha comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but we become the conduit, so we partner with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we become the Ish HaElohim as well.